What is happening people, I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Wild series. This is episode 5 of season 2 and it is called Undertow, last episode. I mean, fucking hell, what an ideal, unexpected episode the last episode was. I was completely happy with the trajectory this season was taking and I wasn't expecting any... I don't know what you would call it, fan service. Like, and fan service is a weird word, by the way, because fan service is used as like a derogatory term for any writing which fans would enjoy. Surely, by definition, everything you do should be fan service. Obviously, not to a stupid extent. There is a line. If you kill a primary character, and then, through magic, bring them back. That is the way you should use the term fan service. Sometimes it's better to think, what do the fans really love about what we've done already? And how can we fucking please them so much without retracing our steps? That's what you should be thinking as a writer of a show. Obviously you don't let the fans dictate where the story goes, but you don't want to be pissing them off, that's just asinine. Diatribe aside, this last episode was perfect fan service. Through organic sets of circumstances, we got to see Daniels get to head another operation and pick his own team. It's all you really wanted as a fan of season 1, but the fact that it seems so impossible at the start of this season and then through 4 episodes has weaved its way back into that is fucking brilliant. It's brilliant fan service. Fan service is a brilliant thing, 99% of the time. There was also uh, this side quest of McNulty trying to find bubbles. To be honest, I think it's a bit of a misleading storyline, that. The whole story isn't misleading, but the cliffhanger they left us on was very misleading, like Bubbles ain't getting shot by Omar. If anything, the storyline was more to reintroduce Bubbles. McNulty had reached a dead end trying to get back in touch with Omar, and then just driving past Bubbles in the street, he's like, oh shit, that's the guy that knows everything that actually talks to us. So it's, again, a perfect organic way to work Bubbles back into this season, and it did lead to Bubbles finding Omar. Like I said, I'm assuming that's a peaceful thing, and he's just going to say, like, McNulty was looking for you, and Omar's going to approach McNulty, and it'll be chill. The other thing that was interesting in the last episode is, the detectives finally made their way down to the dockside bar. This is where everyone who's in on all the shenanigans at the docks goes. Frank's there, Nicky goes all the time, Ziggy goes all the time, uh, horse faces it goes there. Everybody. So the fact that the detectives have made their presence known at that bar and are now leaning on people there, it clearly fucked with Frank because when they told him that they were murders, all 14 bodies were murders, Frank had to go to the toilet to be sick, which shows how much it affects Frank and thankfully proves that he probably had zero to do with the actual act of these women dying which is good to know because frank's a nice guy so everything is just building beautifully another well well constructed season so far some things are slow burns some things are instantly grat gratifying and they're all leading up to lots of conflicts which will play out in the second half of this season so this is undertow episode five let's check it out and see what it's saying to it My man. It's quite a stack that dude's got. I ain't seen him dealing before. Hork was saying the white boys are really shit at dealing as well. These guys seem to be alright. They're passing off the money to one dude. He's passing the drugs. You know, it's not a singular op. At least it's a two man. One guy with the drugs, one guy with the money. God damn it, frog. When you work a G-Pack for a guy, a kickback's supposed to be 500. Stash guy hit, yo. I ain't hearing that shit, I want my fucking money! Ziggy's dealing heroin? You're a fucking idiot, bro. You don't have the muscle, the knowledge, the connections, the money, or anything to successfully do this. I'm gonna see who you fucking with! I look like a fucking punk! You fucking do. You look like an absolute punk. With a nice car and an overly expensive jacket. I can't believe Ziggy's dealing heroin. You're a fucking idiot, mate. Oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're fucked now, bro. Method man, Takao. What the fuck are you doing here, bro? Man, ain't even enough here to really call this shit money, man. Please take it easy, I'm working on it. But my people, you know? <laughs> Yeah, Method Man's used to getting like one million per show. Your little 230 stack is a bit dead. Alright, alright, alright! Look, how about the coat? Take the coat, alright? Ah. 
You fucking idiot. To bow. For this. He's already ruined his nice jacket. True say the other guy poured coffee on it, but still. Fuck, I need that! Oh shit, they took his whip as well. That's got to hurt more than the than the jacket for sure. Unless you're the sh you're the sheep. Fuck you! I mean, this is the most waste man operation of all time. How the fuck did Ziggy even get guys to go stand on them corners? Like, surely there's other gangs operating on that area to begin with, and now he's just got some fucking idiot dudes who obviously are not good at their jobs if they're only bringing back half of the profit from a G-Pack in the first place. And c clearly, there's still black gangs operating in them areas, otherwise they wouldn't be getting shaken down. So why the fuck is Ziggy for one second thinking about dealing heroin in those areas? Are you fucking dumb mate. Don't answer that question. Don't answer that question. Also fucking, as a hip hop head, I've been a hip hop head most of my life since the 90s and to see people like Fred Rostar from Onyx and Method Man from Wu-Tang and shit pop up in uh, the first two seasons so far is fucking dope. I love a cameo if it's like some legendary shit and they're both legends so that's cool. You don't want the posty? I'll take someone else. Why would you even ask Carver again though, Daniels? He was the mole in the division last season. Looking down that list of names on the southeastern roster, I'm saying to myself, why take a man who already burned you once? Why would he? If I caught him once, he might be the last son of a bitch to try it twice. Nice. And I'm guessing you got enough shame on you from the last time so that it won't happen again. No, sir, it won't. Well, it's a ballsy move, Daniels, but you know, I kinda like it, man. Everyone deserves a second chance. Your paycheck may say sergeant, but on this detail, Detective Greggs runs your team. Same as it ever was. Hey, he kinda likes it. How can you be mad when Kima's your boss? Kima's a cool boss, I would imagine. Daniels looks legitimately happy as well. And so does Carver. It's good to see, but still, like, Carver, you fucking little rat. How could you do that shit last season? At least be a mole for Avon, not fucking Burrell, you gimp. Come in. Hey, sweet bitch. Oh, my. Oh, man. I mean, how did I come to love these two absolute pieces of shit during season one? How did that happen to you? How did I miss that? That's some weird shit. Did you lot miss that when they did that? Or was that just me? Am I fucked up? This the hell of man, huh? That's a, that's a fun. Here. Stick that on that, uh, thing there, will ya? The cleat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McNulty the season pro showing bubbles of the ropes. Maybe it's just me, but... Something's way the fuck wrong with this picture. I don't know, I'm kinda starting to like McNulty as a boat cop. What the hell is a Baltimore map? I don't know, but it's never the same thing twice. Fuck you, Boy Scouts. Decipher that riddle. Omar's got some witnessing to do. They said you could reach me at this, this number if you leave a message. So Omar, after all that bravado with his shotty and shit, was just like, yeah, cool, there's my number. Tell McNulty I says call. Oh, so can I fuck you, McNulty? You're just for facilitating him for little fucking 20 bags and shit again. Try get him clean again. I'm making inquiries in, in, in your behalf. I mean, in, in regards to that fucking unforgiving motherfucking Omar, man. Omar. <laughs> True. It gave them a fucked up mission to do. For two smart kids, you just want to be sitting on a sofa, you know, kind of zoned out, festering in a puddle of your own liquefied shit. You don't really want to be having to go and look for crazy dudes with loaded shotguns on them at all times. For your pains. Fucking hell. He's gonna overdose at this rate, McNulty. Calm down. Buy him a crab cake. When I fuck you over, you'll know it. You'll be so goddamn certain you won't need to ask the question. And you, Detective Moreland, are now all alone with 14 red names. <laughs> what? So he's relocated Lester Freeman as well? Now it's just Bunk. That is brutal. And how does that seriously affect Bunk's career? If by the end of term he doesn't have all 14 of those cases solved, does he get demoted because of that? Like, what is the punishment within the police force for such a poor clearance rate on an individual detective? Are you two house hunting? We just started. 
Well, if you're interested in this area, I could run some listings for you. This particular house... It's my Ed Treasy's. At least Nikki's attempting to invest in something that can't be robbed by rival smack dealers. Is, is that the price? That's the listing, yes. Also, they haven't given Nikki's girlfriend's character much depth yet. And because of that, I feel sorry for her because all we've seen of her so far is that she's some, yeah, okay, well, if you want, yeah, cool, while Nikki's walking around being a douche. Just one of these absolute angels who just puts up with all that shit and deals with it. There's probably more to her than that, but just now, because of that, I feel so sorry for her just dealing with this dude's douche fuckery 24 hours a day. So to start with, you and Freeman are going to put some DNRs on the Union Hall phones. Also run what you can on the Union finances and on some back person. They've only got Frank up on that board. What I see happening is there's a giant, giant weak link there now in Ziggy. He's dealing heroin, he's stealing shit. All the things that the detectives can pick up on to press him to uh, become an informant. And Ziggy looks susceptible to that. Uh, on top of that, he's Frank's son, so he knows a lot of the inner workings of the docks. It would make sense if they go on to target Ziggy. Same fuck-ups and the same shit detail working out of the same shit house kind Wait, of office. Wait, so does that mean Bunk's not part of this team? Is it because Lester got moved to this team that Bunk's by himself? Because I thought Daniels asked for both Bunk and Lester. Me and Bunk Morton were fucking with this guy last week, working that case about those dead girls in the container. He is suspect. Just, like, a brief investigation of Frank will surely lead them to the conclusion that he is not involved in any sort of drug shit. Stringer saying they're gonna hook you up with something out of the mix. Like running a club. Or straight business, like. String said they're gonna keep you apart from it and give back some time for family. Oh, fucking shut up, you cheating bitch. D'Angelo's in there doing his time as best he can and you're out there fucking the second in command. I bet you're happy with your sofa though, ain't you? Stringer said so anyhow. Many times you're gonna mention a dude your fucking's name. Darnett, they playing you with that we family and it's all about love. That's how they do. When they got no more use for you, that family shit disappears. It's just about business, Darnett. D'Angelo has seen the other side. Darnett has not. Slow down, fool, because I'm saying you need to spend that shit here. Death could be a fucking bomb, yo. I ain't got no end. My fuck said it ain't shit. No, I ain't say that. So they were going to beat him up just for not spending his money in this terrace. Poot is just nowhere near as good at controlling this situation as like D'Angelo. Shit jumping off in the picture! Just as I say that, hello Preston. That poor dude man, he just wanted better heroin. Who's stopping niggas over bullshit man? It's true. Somebody gotta pull a string up on this. I don't know if that's a wise decision. That's you literally calling Stringer and saying, you know how I run the terrace now? Well, I'm shit. I need help because I'm shit. I don't think Stringer is going to take too kindly to hearing that shit. Jesus, what the fuck happened? Fucking niggers got me. Oh, fucking hell. Ziggy and Nikki have both used that word now. Fucking little racist cunts. Why the fuck would I know how he'd be? Nikki. It ain't my fault, all right? It ain't. It 100% is your fault, mate. You're a little weak waste man with no muscle trying to deal heroin in a gang-controlled area. They got princess, man. They're holding her for fucking ransom, and now they're telling me. They're telling me. I don't have the money by Friday. They're going to kill me. Is Nicky actually going to give Ziggy his fucking house money? I ain't giving you the money. They're going to kill me. I gave my money to Amy for an apartment. So either Ziggy would have to go ask Amy or Nikki would have to ask Amy back, Amy for it back. Let's put Ziggy in a really tough spot though. He's obviously going to resort to some more theft of some description. Oh shit, he's got a thumbprint. Valchek is petty enough to get like, whoever's thumb that is cut the fuck off and put in jail. Lieutenant Daniel said I should see you about a surveillance van. Uh, a van? Um, I had a van's on loan to the Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> your van is having the time of its life. You ain't never seen a happier van than your van, bro. I know he's a dick, but because of his pettiness, Valchek is low-key one of my favourite characters. 
What are the options when you got an inferior product in an aggressive marketplace? Well, if you have a large share of the market, you buy up the competition. And if you don't? Reduce price to increase market share. This guy has given him such good heroin game advice. He needs to hire this dude. One of the largest fraud cases in history. So he proposed to change the name. Exactly. So the name change option is definitely the cheapest and quickest to do. I'm a spacuta. Is this cool? Are these two other detectives from the department we don't see as much? Grand jury. You lie to us, you hurt our feelings. You lie to them, it's perjury. What would they be summoning him to the grand jury for, though? Not sure. Johnny 50. How you doing, officer? Johnny 50. What the fuck is that? Son of a bitch drinks 53 beers on his 25th birthday. <laughs> That's impressive, Johnny. The detective here thinks we know something about that mess. He thinks we'd leave him there on the dock in a box, dying there in the dark, because... Frank makes a good fucking point. Why would they even bring that heat to their dock in the first place? And three sisters. And they got daughters. And I got too much respect for women. Not to be pissed off at what's in your heads right now. I respect Frank's st stance. What do you say any question? I take the fifth commandment. And if they offer you immunity to testify against your union brothers? I don't remember. Don't remember what? Nothing. They have all been so well schooled in this shit. But what I like is, like, Frank's not guilty. He's just like, don't press us like that, because we won't. We ain't saying shit. Our books have been open to the Justice Department for eight years. We're here through Bobby Kennedy, Tricky Dick Nixon, Ronnie the Union Buster Reagan, and half a dozen other sons of bitches. We'll be here through your weak bullshit, no problem. Punk's still not impressed. He's giving him the are you done face. Come on. Today? Now! You don't usually see Bunk that angry. I think he's just frustrated at the brick wall he's facing with the union workers, but at the same time, he's barking up the wrong tree with Frank. Frank ain't done shit. You provided the size and even suggested the manufacturer. Uh, Australian or one of those A countries. Is that correct? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Austria. Barry showed it to me. He showed you the weapon before the murder? <laughs> even McNulty's impressed by it. Bert committed more than one murder. Fish got to swim, you know what I'm saying? McNulty fucking loves Omar. Omar is the best. I can see why people like Omar. I like Omar. Here's a voucher for court clothes. Anything with a tie. That's very loose rules. Don't give such loose rules to such a loose cannon. He'll come wearing nothing but a trench coat, two shotguns, and a tie. Tie goes well with trench coat. Look at Morpheus. Because I'm out here getting done with needs done. Feel me, nigga? <laughs> they even motherfuckers take everything, don't they? No, that is a bad representation of white people that enjoy different elements from different cultures. I was a hip hop MC, a rap my whole life, was always proud to be Scottish and represented where I was from while doing it, while involving myself in a larger culture that did not originate from Scotland. You can do both without coming across like an absolute twat. They say a police is only as good as his informants. Meaning we ain't about much. Yet. And most of these dot walkers won't say shit, but you know who will? Ziggy. So as soon as they pick up that scent, everyone at the docks is now in trouble. So look? No, it ain't. <laughs> you figure it out for yourself. Go and suit shopping with Omar. That's fucking beautiful. I could watch 20 minutes of these scenes. You got any raw up in here? You got the spur? For sure. All right, then we good. Go and hide my niggas running back. It's fucking ridiculous. Copy this. It's all in the props, baby. All in the props. He doesn't even fucking need, like, a disguise anymore. He was right there. The white dealers are portrayed in this show to be fucking terrible. I have known a lot of white dealers of different things in my time, and they've all been better than the guys in this show. This show is prejudiced towards white drug dealers so far. You working with them? Sort of. I fished her out. I kind of feel like it's on me to find her people. <laughs> You're kidding, right? McNulty is going above and beyond in this case. 
I still wonder, like, what is this all about for McNulty? It seems like he's personally invested. He seems like one of these detectives that genuinely is like, this is fucked up, these women are dead. And I want to find out what happened. But also there's that side of it where he's sticking it to Rawls and now he's trying to solve it to stop Bunk from having to take the hit of the 14 models. So there's all sorts of ulterior motives in play in a lot of the scenes in this series so far. Very similar to when uh, Avon had the conversation with D'Angelo before the hot show. I want you to stop moving cans through our docks. At least until this shit chills. These were local police, right? Yeah. So it's straight money that the Greeks are moving in through the docks. I didn't realise it was just cash. I thought they had products or something. Not drugs necessarily, but so- some other thing. Says he wants to meet with the Greek. <laughs> Anything you can say to the Greek, you can say to me. Says he wants the Greek. Why are they so guarded of the Greek meeting anybody? What do you need them for? It's just business. Everything is just business with us. We buy for a nickel. What does he need them for, though? I mean, it's all right if you're just doing some, you know, other shit, but if you're making fucking atomic bombs or something. I respect Nicky for asking them that question. He's not just thinking about the money. He is genuinely concerned as to the motive of needing so many chemicals. Closest is a case up in Jersey, Hudson County. Raid on a couple of clubs up there, put about a dozen in their bullpen four days ago. Well, that'll work. So you're really going to go up there on your own time? McNulty does seem to really care, even if in the back of his mind he's thinking about bunk. He, he is invested in this case on a personal level. You getting some days? Pretty much. I'm in the tower now, working the lanes. I thought he had his arm out extended to shake her hand there for a minute. Maybe we could just go for a cup of coffee and talk, you know? Let me get my jacket. This guy thinks he's pulled. No, 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 mate. This is a, a casual interrogation. I told him y'all was gonna set him up and everything. And he know how y'all been doing for me while he away. He knows some. Fuck this side story. The treachery. I'm about to get my ass shot behind this bullshit. We're reasonable, they're reasonable. Man, fuck that baby on your side of town. Nicky's an idiot for backing Ziggy in this situation as well. You give the car back, I'll get him to sell it off. Camaro with a 350 in it, it's gotta be worth more than three grand. That's right clever. Right clever, I got to say. It's a decent offer. That ride ain't worth nothing near 3,000. <laughs> oh, you don't believe me? Have a look. They turned it out. That look, that's like freshly lit on fire as well. What is the point of that? Like, they ain't making no money burning out the car. Why not sell it themselves? I ain't no snitch, BD. Not even for you or my snitch. I'm not thinking about it like that. I quite like this guy after they pulled up Ziggy about stealing the cameras. How come it didn't go nowhere? You did good, who knows? Is she not good at commitment or something? Oh, Beatrice, Beatrix. When that ship sails and there ain't no problems and that paper gets tossed, that don't happen today, right? Nothing gets tossed anymore. The computer. Oh shit, so because everything's digital, there's essentially a infinite paper trail through modern technology that they can start siphoning through. Damn. And also, that's the first guy at the docks that's been a bit snitchy. So shame on you for your dock brothers, but also big ups to you for trying to figure out what happened to 14 dead women. That's a lot of dead women. Good news and bad, Zig. Fucking niggers. Give me the bad. Oh, can we stop hearing people say that fucking word? Even as an actor, like, fair play, these guys are acting, they're playing racist characters and they're not racist, but even as an actor, after doing a take and having to say it, I would punch my own face, do you know what I mean? Fucking hell. Yeah, and this is going to obviously lead to Ziggy... Like I said, Ziggy is the weak link, and even worse, the people dealing for him are even easier targets and weaker links. I mean, these guys are getting picked up. They're all going to say Ziggy's name, and then Ziggy's fucked, and he is a weak link, and it will all come tumbling down. Carver just doesn't look like a heroin addict. Toothpick behind the ear and shit, chewing gum. (laughs) 
<laughs> one more time with the toothpick and I'm going to stab him in the fucking eye with it. Uh, Hork, sorry. I like Hork a lot more this season so far. He's still got a bit of banter, but at least he's doing his fucking job. This business with the grand jury. We checked the courthouse. There was nothing special. Just the regular panels. They're trying to scare the men on the docks. This Greek guy is so low-key, he's so mysterious. He's almost as mysterious as, like, Avon was in the first few episodes of season one. He's a very man-behind-the-curtain-y type character just now. This Jamaican cat who got the strip on K Street, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you're talking about Petey, Petey Dixon. You go over to the expressway at lunchtime, you can watch the fiends traveling from west to east. Damn. Fuck. They are losing a lot of money. You're working it out with D? Boy, gotta find his own way. I have a slight suspicion that at some point in the future, Stringer and Avon will come head to head with one another. I hope this doesn't happen and Stringer remains loyal. But the one weakness he's shown just now is the ability to be disloyal and discreet and cheating and lying. They're all traits which could um, lead to him maybe wanting this for himself, especially if Avon isn't able to get as good a product as he once used to be able to do. But that's for later seasons, I'm sure. Just predicting the future, don't mind me. They're throwing my people in the back of police cars and this asshole can't even talk face to face. Yeah, I didn't think Frank would be happy with just the money. It's not about the money with Frank. I think Frank might just have signed his death warrant there. You even know what the fuck you're doing there, Zig? I'm the checkers local, right? You know, while you local 47 boys were having bulk cargo dropped on your heads, we was out grabbing a future by the boss. What the fuck is he searching? These, all oh, these chemicals. I don't even give a fuck what they need this shit for. If they want it, they want it. I mean, besides, if I don't get some money soon... Street drugs. So it is just a drug thing, that's alright, as long as it's not fucking bombs. See, that's fine. That's fine. As long as they're not supplying terrorists with planet-destroying nukes or something, it's cool, let them have their cocaine chemicals. Jesus Christ. That's like the nicest use for a chemical, surely, to process something into something of value, which people enjoy. What this shows is the Aqua Verde at birth four. The plan calls for 85 moves, that's cans, containers coming off the ship and others going back on. That's quite a good technology, like in today's day and age, to keep track of every single shipping container perfectly. And with all the equipment and container stacks out there, sometimes some waves get knocked down. That happens, a can don't get entered. Or just as easy, a checker makes the wrong entry, either because he's lazy, he's sloppy, or he's still shit-faced from the night before. I mean, he's complying, he's being as honest as possible. I'm just saying if you go by the computer, it might look like there's some kind of dirt going down when it's really just a glitch in the system. Good way to cover any dirt going down as well, Frank. Nice. Can I give you everything you need? He did, thanks. They're playing us. He's not playing you, he's just like, he's not giving up the Greek. He is not giving up the Greek because he will get killed and he's not a snitch. He will die if he tells you any more than he can. He's trying to be helpful and get you to fuck out off his back because he ain't telling you shit about nothing that'll get him killed. You change up the name. What else? Yo, I got it. Change the caps from red to blue, right? Make it look like we got some fresh shit, boop. A brand change. So a fiend gets some bad shit from one, he go back to the other. And there's a thinking man right there. See, nigga, ain't that what the fuck I just said? Nice. That's a good idea, Bodie. Was that just what he said? I missed it. I thought Bodie thought of it. You use that shit to process drugs, don't you? Cocaine. I respect that is that's like a dope thing though. Like Nicky did something really cool there. Like he could have just been like, fuck it, let's make the money. Who cares where the chemical chemicals go? Like Ziggy did. Ziggy wouldn't give a fuck if it was gonna get used to blow up a city or something. But Nicky did a bit of uh, looking into it and it's like, okay, cocaine. I mean, yes, it's an illegal substance, but fucking hell. It's got a consumer base based on people that want to buy it who go and buy it for themselves because they want it. Bombs, slightly different consumer base. People generally are exposed to one that didn't ask for it. <laughs> What did she say? She wants to know if she knows a girl, does she get to stay? All right, that's some bullshit though, because they might start giving up fake shit. (laughs) 
So because they're not going to get to stay if they identify one, they'll just tell them to go fuck themselves. That's fucked. That could have been one of their friends in one of those photos. They never even gave a shit. So falling one investigation into the other makes sense. Not to me, it doesn't. I'm not bringing you open murders anywhere near this detail. That's a loser fuss. Lieutenant. True. If they combine those cases, that makes uh, that makes Daniel's new unit instantly a failure unless they solve all of them. They have no patience for anything but a quick shake. We got enough room here for it anyway. Oh, is he gonna do it? You can sit up here at the offsite, and we can share information, but the murders stay with homicide. Unless, of course, you find a suspect. Unless you find a suspect, in which case we're instantly modding and I'm getting credit for solving all 14 of them murders. That's dope though, so that means Bunk is in office now. Now all we need is an excuse for McNulty to be in that office and the Avengers are fully assembled, Thanos is fucked. Who's Thanos? The Greek? You're fucked mate. You ain't got no gauntlet. What you got? What you got? Bowler hat? Fuck off. Set us triple rate for every can. Triple? Surely Frank's gonna be down for that. Frank just isn't down for any of this shit. I respect Frank, but this is gonna get him killed. The Greeks are just gonna kill Frank. Ah, fuck. And uh, that was episode 5 of season 2 of The Wire Undertow. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Undertow, what did I think of that? Fucking hell, The, the Wire season 2 is dope. I do not know why anybody would dislike this season. I've said it almost every episode so far, I'm going to continue to say it. It's strange that people dislike this season. It starts off by showing us that Ziggy's got this small her heroin operation going on on the streets, using a lot of white, wishing they were black type guys as the dealers who are inept as fuck. It makes even Herc look like a fucking genius later on when he's able to buy so many vials off so many different ones of them. This, I believe, is going to lead to them getting up to Ziggy, which is going to lead to a lot of things getting exposed, because if Ziggy gets leaned on, he will talk. McNulty's still moving forward with his own, I guess, private investigation onto what happened to these girls. Um, like I said, it's a bit conflicting as to whether or not, like, he obviously does care, but the ulterior motive is there still, that, like, you know, these models have been assigned to bunk, and that fucks him. I wonder how McNulty would be just now if he was still fucking over Rawls only with these models. Would he be as invested in solving it, or would he be laughing in the bar every night with Bunk and Lester Freeman? It's hard to tell. I would like to think he would still be personally invested, but yeah, there's a grey area there. I like the little sub-story of um, Stringer getting advice from his macroeconomics teacher and then relaying that by a group discussion at the funeral parlor as to how to switch up the product and keep it fresh. Now, what they should be doing is doing what Avon's looking into and getting in touch with these east side guys. Perhaps they'll find a connect they are willing to deal with them and expand, maybe get a little cut for expanding or something but not overcharging them for the actual product and they'll be back with dope shit. Otherwise, Avon's power weakens. The Avon is obviously the connect. That's how he got to where he is. He's got the guy who grows it or who bundles it in large bulk, right? He can get them and he's not just got one, clearly. He's got that Roberto guy and then he's got his fucking Atlanta connect. Now he's talking about three guys he knows over on the east side. He's got people for this shit all over. He's obviously accumulated that um, Rolodex of contacts over a long period of time being in the game. But if he can only get weak product, he's as strong as his product. And Stringer, who's a very internalised thinking man, I don't think we'll be seeing Avon as very strong or useful just now, which is a shame. I hope he's loyal. But if he's a disloyal guy, in that regard, which he's kind of shown himself having the capacity to be, then if I was Avon, I would uh, make sure I get a high quality connect again quickly to show people that, like, that's how Avon flexes his power. He can get the good shit, the raw shit, for the best price. So that's what he needs to do, otherwise he's going to continuously look weaker and weaker in the eyes of Stringer. He's already cut off 
Stringer from getting the shit from the main connect for being suspected as an informant due to his short sentence. Stringer at this point might think, well I can fucking cut him off and uh, then Roberto will deal with me again and I'll be getting that good raw shit again. You know, all these thoughts might come to pass or maybe they're just me conspiracy theorying about a while, but you know, I haven't seen this shit before, I'm allowed to do so and be wrong. Also, shout out to my guy, Wise Guy 5674 my brother, he asked for a shout out, he's fucking getting one. Any of you guys want a shout out in these videos, just let me know. Daniels is allowing Bonk and Beatrix, Beatrice, I forget which one of the two it is, but he's allowing them to work in that unit with them, so it is proper like a fucking dream team now, sans McNulty, but we'll get in there. It's just a fucking dope room of fucking characters we like at this point, so it's cool. It's a nice setup, and it's good to see them get an envelope in. And I love that Daniel said, like, you keep them murders for homicide unless you get me a suspect, because in which case, our little unit is going to look like the dopest thing ever when we take this unsolvable case and then fucking knock it for six with a c conviction. So I completely respect his strategic choices in that situation after how last season went for him. You can't hate it. Daniels ain't stupid. Like he said, fuck me once, shame on you. Do you know what I mean? But the biggest thing to me was like, Frank has sealed his fate, sort of, in this episode. These Greeks seem like they're not the type to be fucked with. They obviously need those docks as a method to get their money in, to get other things stolen that they need. And if Frank cuts off their ability to do that, I f have a feeling they will cut off Frank's ability to control the union and run that dock. I mean, they cut a guy's throat just for being involved in the loss of that money. How much money will Frank be losing them telling them they can't bring it in? So unfortunately, while I love the stance Frank took in this episode, and I'm proud of him, and he's an honourable dude, unfortunately, because of that, I think he's probably going to get killed. And you know what sucks? I mean, I could still be wrong about this, and you, you, you guys will be laughing, like, listen to him go on and on about this theory for episodes, and like, you know, Frank ends up becoming the godfather of the East Side by season 5 or something, I don't fucking know, do you know what I mean? But it's just set up Frank. For me to like him so much that I feel like it, I feel that, you know that when your hair stand up in the back of your neck and you get that Game of Thronesy vibe like a show's just gonna rip something away from you. Yeah, like a spider sense of foreboding doom. And he's a nice, honourable, cool character and I hope he does not die, but I have a feeling he may die. If this show is ruthless enough to shoot Kima through the fucking neck, then yeah, I've got a feeling that Frank's probably gonna get his life taken. If you would like to give this channel some life, click like. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, and ring the bell if you would like to be notified as to when they are dropping. If there's anything you want to talk about from anything we just watched, or anything you want to recommend I watch in the future, or just shoot the shit, comment down below. And share this video around to anybody you think might appreciate it or might want to watch this series along with us. My Patreon link is down there in the description. If you become a Patron, you get access to exclusive polls and posts. You get access to these videos I put on YouTube weeks and weeks in advance. And you also get access to full-length versions of all the reactions I put on YouTube. So they're all up on the Patreon in their full-length entirety. So consider becoming a Patron. Link down there. It helps me and the channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA. Peace.